Hi! I'm gonna make a wine rack. I've marked out the centers on my board and figured out how far to space apart the holes. These are going to be for the larger part of the wine bottle. I'm using a three and a half inch hole saw. So I'll start cutting the holes. Okay, so to set up the cut for the skinny end of the wine bottle up here, I've already made this cut for this part, so I'm going to make the cut for this part. I will center my hole saw on my drill press exactly on the cuts that I already made, and I've got a board down here without holes already made. I will press my hole saw into that hole to get the center found, to find the center of it. And then I'll switch out my bit after I've pressed it into all these holes. I'll switch out my bit to my spade bit, an inch and a quarter, which should accommodate most wine bottles. I'll switch out the bit to that, and then I'll use the center punch that I made using this bit and drill those holes out. And that should give me a nice witness mark so I can drill my other hole. Nice, okay, yep, there it is. So then I'll do it on the other three holes and we'll be good to go. I only drilled about, I don't know, three quarters of the way through this piece with the spade bit uh, because the nature of this bit tends to tear out the underside of your cut. So I just drilled enough to where the point of the spade bit poked through the bottom. Then I flipped the workpiece over um, and I lined it up with the point again and I clamped it in place using the handle on my drill press and then used an actual clamp to clamp the workpiece in place and now I will finish the cut here so hopefully you guys can see how that goes <laughs> pretty smooth. So I thought and thought and thought about how to raise up this end for the larger end of the wine bottle so that the wine bottles are sitting at an angle because apparently that's what you're supposed to do for wine racks. Uh, here's a wine bottle here, so this end's supposed to be up. And I thought and thought and thought about it with making stretchers that would 
cut at a 15 degree angle that would lift one end up. And the more I thought about it, yes, this might look better, but what I'm going to do is just cut these, the end that receives the bottleneck, and just cut them down to about half the size of this end, so it'll sit lower, about like that and the bottle will still be tilted at an angle. So I'm gonna start making those cuts. Okay, so I'm going to connect the two pieces of the wine rack with the small holes and the large holes using a dowel. So I've marked out halfway between the first holes uh, vertically and horizontally, and I'm going to drill those out using this old Forstner bit. <laughs> So the spacing I have laid out on my bottle stops is about six and a half inches and the holes that I drilled are an inch and an eighth each so if I want the spacing to be six and a half I will mark this dowel at eight and three quarters and that should give me the spacing I want so I've made a sight line here on my dowel and set up a stop block on my miter saw and I'll go ahead and cut these. Okay so if you have been wondering how this will go together I'll be completely honest I have been as well but I've got these one inch dowels that I have cut to the length on the miter saw that I showed you that set up earlier and these holes here drilled in the bottle holders is what I'm going to call them and this should fit in like this like that and that should give it plenty of solid support I'm just going to glue these in place so you're going to see that now I'd like to share a mistake I made. Um, I glued these runners on and while the glue is holding fine for now, if you'll notice, the grain on this piece is running vertically and the grain on the bigger piece is running horizontally. And over time, the wood on the large piece will expand and contract this way. And the wood on this smaller piece will expand and contract this way. So over time, this glue joint will fail. Um, and I didn't, I didn't realize it till I started looking at it um, the next day, today. So what I'm going to do just to hold it in place when the glue joint eventually fails, and it will. It might be a year from now, it might be 10 years from now, depending on the humidity of where it's stored. But I'm just going to run some screws through the back end here. Two screws on each level to hold it in place. I was just going to glue it until I started looking at it closer. So. So I drove those screws in. I actually marked a spot to put two screws in, but I don't want to push my luck and 
One screw should hold it. I mean, the glue will last for a long time. If you guys don't know, wood glue is stronger than the actual wood. There's several great videos on YouTube talking about that. So this is, this joint, the glue joint is super strong. The only thing I was worried about is, because uh, I am using solid wood, the expansion and contraction of this piece and this piece could eventually cause that glue joint to fail. But now that I've reinforced it with some screws, and that is exactly what I've done. It's it's just reinforcing them. It's not for structural reasons at all. It's just in case that glue joint were to ever pop free due to humid humidity reasons. Um, it it will now be fastened in place with the screws. So now I need to work on getting the front side fastened in place and then I gotta finish it. So these front faces are not coplanar meaning they're not exactly even with each other. So I'm going to take my hand plane. I plant my workpiece down to my workbench. I'm going to take a hand plane and go over them all. This is a tedious and lengthy process, but if you just enjoy it and take some pride in your work, then it's actually kind of fun. So this video will most likely be sped up, but here's what it looks like. Just taking some carving tools here and just slowly carving out the relief for the neck. These are very sharp carving tools so it takes out a good amount of material. challenge is going to be making all of these dowels look identical. <clears throat> but I don't think it'll be too hard. I'll just hit it with some a block of sandpaper. I think it's going to look really nice actually. So as you can see that's just peeling off and up. Again, this is a mistake from earlier. I should have accounted for this before I did all the joinery. But that's woodworking. You have to make up for your mistakes as you go and you have to problem solve. <clears throat> I would say 75% of making custom projects and crafts while woodworking is problem solving. 
Perhaps if I had looked up plans for a 12 bottle wine rack, <clears throat> I could have foreseen this and made all my cuts and put it together perfectly. But then that's not a custom piece, is it? If you look up plans or buy plans for something. <clears throat> this entire design came from my brain. And it's more fun that way, trust me. It's also more work that way. Almost guarantee none of this dialogue is done into the final video. It's going to work out just fine. Yeah, I know. I already stained it. Now I got to stain it again. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Here it is. My wine rack's finished. I just need to put a coat of a coater for poly on it, and it'll be done. Uh, next week, I'm gonna make a box for something. Tune in next week, and you'll find out. Thanks, guys, for watching. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. The day comes to an end. The day comes to an end Say goodbye to all my friends Then I shut up the lights And I say it'll be alright The night closes in